In VBA, the list box is a key control for making high quality user interfaces. While it's functional, the standard VBA list box dates back to the 1990s and lacks the advanced features found in modern web-based list boxes. A few months ago, I set out to create a modern version of the list box control. Not only to add more features, but to make it visually more appealing and easier to use. What I didn't expect was how challenging that would be. It demanded a significant amount of code, numerous creative solutions, and plenty of complex errors to deal with. But finally it's finished, and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how it works and how you can easily implement it in your own projects with just a few lines of code. You can download a code which includes the demonstration from the link in the description below the video. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is a list box? The list box is a control that allows us to neatly display large data sets without overwhelming the user. The list box allows the user to easily navigate this data, make selections, sort, filter and so on. Let's have a look at what the new list box can do. I've included a bunch of controls on our user form so we can easily update the list box for this demonstration. Later I will show you how to install and use the list box in your own projects in just a few lines of code. You can see here that the list box is not the most appropriate size at the moment for the data that we have loaded. We can easily set the best size by checking the auto resize with checkbox. This uses a property of the list box to automatically set the width based on the number of columns. We also set the height automatically in a similar way and this sets the height based on the number of records that we are displaying on a page. Now if you prefer there are properties that allow you to set the height and width manually. Let's explore some of the awesome features of the modern list box. First we can set custom headers. This may not sound groundbreaking, but in the original list box the header could only be derived from the row source. With the modern list box we can easily set headers using comma separated string or arrange. Let me show you how it works. Once we assign the headers they appear at the top of the list box. You'll also notice that the data is split into multiple pages with navigation buttons below. Clicking a number will take you to the corresponding page and you can also use arrows to move through the pages. So by default it's set to display 10 records per page but we can adjust that. For example if I set it to show 5 records the list box automatically updates and the pagination adjusts accordingly. And thanks to the order resize that we set on the list box adapts its height based on the number of records displayed. Now let's look at sorting. You can click on any column header to sort the data in ascending or descending order. Filtering is also built in. As you type into the filter box it dynamically filters through all the columns. So for example if I start typing sci-fi it narrows down the list as I type each letter. And here's another example where I type AV you can see that it filters by records with AV. Selecting items is straightforward, you just click to select an item. And if you want to retrieve the selected item, there is a property for that. So I'll demonstrate by selecting Black Panther, the movie, and displaying the details in a message box. We can also use multi-select. After it's enabled, you can select multiple items, and they stay selected even when you sort or change pages. This feature extends to filtering as well. For example, if I filter by drama, it retains that selection when I remove the filter. You can also select or deselect all items with a single action. Finally, if you need to display or edit details of a specific record, the list box supports an event trigger. So when a record is clicked, you can bring up a form displaying all the details of that record, making it easy to review or modify information. One of the key features of this list box is the scroll bars. For example, if we disable the auto height resize, and then we limit the display to 15 records per page, not all the records will fit on the screen. To handle this, we can enable scroll bars. And this allows us to easily scroll through all the records. 
If we increase the number of records to 25, the scroll bars adjust accordingly, letting us navigate up and down and even across if needed. These are some of the core features of the list box. Now let's walk through how you can install and use the list box in your own applications with just a few simple lines of code. I'm going to show you how to install this list box and I'll do it from scratch so that you can see every single step. First of all, download the zip file using the link below the video. Next, double click on the zip file to view the contents. You'll find a couple of files inside. Drag the file with the XLAM extension to your add-ins folder. So your add-ins folder will look something like this. Once the file has been copied, open Excel, go to the developer tab and select Excel add-ins. Click browse and navigate to the add-in folders where you just placed the file. Select it and you'll see it checked and ready to use. The add-in is now installed and it's ready to use in any of your projects. Let's try it out. Now let's look at how we can use a list box in our project. Suppose we have some data that we want to display in the list box. Here's how we would do it. First of all, we press Alt F11 to open the Visual Basic Editor. You can see the modern list box add-in in the project window. First of all, we insert the user form and then we add a frame control. This frame will act as a container for the list box. Next, we press F7 to view the code and we add the user form initialize event. To do this, we select user form from the left dropdown and initialize from the right dropdown. Now we can delete all these other subs as we don't need them. So this event runs when the user form loads. We declare a variable for the list box. And at this point, you may notice that the class doesn't appear in the IntelliSense. And this is because we haven't added a reference to the add-in yet. So to use the add-in, we need to add a reference and we go to tools, references, and then we find modern list box and select it. And once that's done, the modern list box class is now available in our current project. So this is similar to how we add the dictionary to our VBA projects. Now, because we want to capture events from the list box, we declare it using the with events keyword. We use the instantiate function to create the list box object. And now the list box is created. We'll use the with statement to set up the list box properties. The first thing that we do is assign the frame control on our user form to our list box. Now all we've left to do is add the data. And we can do this by simply using the list property and assigning it to a range of data. Now we run the code and you can see that our list box is populated. The sword filter and pagination features work automatically without any extra code. Let's walk through how to configure the list box using code. First, let's control how many records are displayed on each page. This is simple to achieve by setting the records per page property to whatever value you like. As a result, the list box will display five records per page and pagination will automatically adjust based on the total number of records. In this case, it divides them over three pages. Next, we might want the list box to automatically resize based on its content. To do this, we can enable automatic width and automatic height. And we do this very easily by just saying automatic width equals true and automatic height equals true. And this will make the list box automatically adjust its width based on the number of columns and its height based on the number of records. When you run the code, you can see that the list box has resized accordingly. By default, the list box shows generic column headers like column one, column two, etc. To use headers from a worksheet range, you can use the headers from array property. And we use it like this. We simply assign it to a range. And this will pull the headers from that range and apply them to the list box. You can see the result when we run the code. By default, the list box allows single selections only. If you want to enable multi-selection, you can adjust the selection mode property. Here's how to allow multiple selections. Note that using multi and extended give the same result, which is essentially multi-selections. When we run this code, checks box will appear next to the list items, allowing users to select multiple records.
You can customize the width of each column using the column widths property. This is done by providing a semicolon separated string that defines the width of each column. And you can see here that the column widths match the column widths that we set. Since we've enabled automatic width, the list box will adjust this overall width accordingly. And finally, you can enable a hover effect to highlight records when the cursor moves over them. And we do this simply by setting hover on property to be true. Now, as you move your cursor over the records, they will be highlighted, providing a smoother user experience. One important list box task is to retrieve the selected data. And I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. First, we create a button. Let's call it first row button. And we will click this to retrieve the selected row of data. We double click on the button to add our code. In this case, we use the selected item function of the list box to get the selected item. This function will return the first selected row of data if in multi-select mode and the only row if we're using single selection mode. We declare a data variable as a variant type. This will store the array that we retrieve from the function. We can set a breakpoint here and run the code. After selecting an item and clicking the button, we can inspect the data in the watch window. You can see that it shows all the values from the selected row in the data array. Let's say we want to write this data to a worksheet. That's easy. We'll use the function array to range, which takes the selected data and writes it to a specified range. In this case, we'll write it to sheet two range A1, overriding any existing data. Now this function is included as part of the modern list box code. Let's run this code. We select John Smith from the list box. After clicking the button, the data is written to the first row of sheet two. If we want to retrieve multiple selections, we can do this as well. So we create another button, a multi-row button, and we will modify the previous code to use selected items function, which returns all the selected items. We select several rows, for example, Jane, Michael, and Emily. And then when we click multi-row button, this writes the selected row to the worksheet and it only took a few lines of code. All of this is done with minimal effort on the programmer's part as the hard work is done under the hood. Let's say we want to trigger an event when someone clicks on an item in the list box, and this can be very useful. So we can achieve this by using the item selected event. First, we define a private sub for the event like this, and the event captures the row number as long, so we use that as the parameter. Now before item selected, we've got to put the name of our list box variable followed by an underscore, just like that. So let's place a breakpoint within the event handler to pause the code execution when an item is clicked. We run the code and you will see that when we click on the item in the list box, the code pauses in the item selected procedure. So this confirms that the event works. Now let's add something useful. We can display a message box showing the row number of the selected item using this code. When we run the code and click on an item, the message box shows the row number. For example, if we go to page 3 and select the last record, it will display row 15 was selected. The row refers to the actual data row and not the row on the page. If you found this video useful, you may also enjoy the data entry and searchable drop down videos.